Good afternoon and welcome to Jeff and the Rabbi. Great show today. It's Hanukkah time. It's Hanukkah, Hanukkah time, time in the city. It's a, it's a great show. So Rabbi Freeman texts me last night with a great topic, Hanukkah. Today, who would be the Hellenists and who would be the uh, Maccabees? Tough topic. So I was, of course, going to do a lot of the uh, research last night, which I usually do on mm -hmm. Sunday night. But lately, i got to tell you, Sunday night has become my television night. Mm -hmm. Ever since Al Jazeera came out with their new reality television show. Yeah. Uh, oh. Si oh, my God, it's great. So last night I'm watching the series finale, which I, I should have called you and told you to watch this. The series finale of Bowling for Jews, which is an amazing thing. Muhammad, right at the end, had to pick up a 7-10 Jew split. He missed it. He had to blow himself up. An amazing ending to a great series, which I loved it. So then I'm about to go do my research. New episode comes on a brand new show, which again I should have called you about. Um, Yemen's next top model, and let me tell you, this was this was a good show. But if there are any rabbis watching here, I'm going to tell you, get your 10 to 15 kids out of the room if you're going to watch this one, because it was a little bit, a little bit on the edge. Right as they get to the runway thing, you know, the, the beautiful women are walking down the runway, and they had what we call in the industry a wardrobe malfunction. There was, if you and I rewound a whole bunch of times on my TiVo, a ankle slip. An ankle came out right in the middle of the thing. Aye. So obviously the episode ended with a stoning, which is which was what you would expect. It was, it was a great episode. So, you know, uh, listen, it wasn't her fault, but someone had to take someone life. had someone had to take the stoning for it. Right. So I, was, I didn't get to do much research on this, so I think I'm going to have to rely on you a little bit today right. for this topic. But it is a good topic. It's kind of a, it's out there. You know, you can go either way in this thing, and it can get a little dangerous on this topic right. here. Right, the, the Hellenists, like what's. First of all, what's with this Helen? And second of all, what's with the mac and cheese? That is, that's a good point. Yeah. That's, that's very good. Uh, yeah. Helen and that's mac why, and cheese. That's why I was so confused. You see what right. happened here. Especially I like this dreidel. You know, this dreidel is the ultimate because you can't lose. it never falls. <laughs> it never falls, right. <laughs> it never drops. So it's a great dreidel. So let's talk about the Hellenists. Yes. Let's talk about the Maccabees. 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 Okay, Maccabees. Right. Okay. Right. Maccabees. Now, the quick story, the thumbnail sketch. Alexander the Great is a Greek, and he marches off right. and conquers the known world at the time. And at the time, the Greeks were the most advanced people in the world. You know, the uh, philosophy, philosophers, scientists, mathematicians, Pythagoras, right. Archimedes, you know, building the Parthenon and all this type of stuff. Right. Wonderful acts of architecture, music, understanding color, and everything like that. Now, they also believed in a whole pantheon of gods. Right. They were pagans. Okay, that was their religious belief. So when they went around the world and conquered all these different countries, they brought their belief with them. One of the countries they conquered was Israel, and they brought their belief with them. Right. Now, Jews always have a hankering for something new. I've noticed that. Jews love, Jews are the first in line for something new. Absolutely. New and improved, especially. Right. So a lot of Jews started to take to this Greek philosophy, and they became Hellenized, like Hellenic islands, you know, Greek, right. Hellene. Right. Okay. So the Jews started to get Hellenized, and they started observing Jewish and Greek. And after a while, a little bit more Greek, a little less Jewish, and then after a while, Pretty much Greek yeah, with some happens. Jewish overtones. That happens. I've you know, seen that. Like it's it's Greek with a little like Judaism sprinkled, sprinkled on the in, top. Right. Yeah, on the top, you know, just to make it look Jewish, but right. it's basically Greek. It got so bad that there's a temple in Jerusalem, and after a while the Jews in Jerusalem said, Why don't we make it into a Greek temple? They turned the gymnasiums, all the schools, the Torah schools into gymnasiums. Right. And you know how it goes. They taught Torah topics. And they taught Greek topics. So this was the Jews doing this. This was they, it wasn't the Greeks coming Jews. in. This was the Jews. Hundred percent taught Torah well, and Greek thought. Well. And after a while, little Torah and a little bit more Greek thought, and a little less Torah and a lot of Greek thought. Right, right. Until pretty soon, you find these like Jewish schools where there's a little bit of Torah and an awful lot of Greek a thought. A lot of Greek thought. Right. Yeah. And then they went into the temple in Jerusalem. They cleared it out. They said, let's turn it into a Greek temple. And, you know, we'll do all the Greek things at the temple. And, you know, when the rabbi got up to speak, the rabbi talked about all the Greek philosophical ideas. Right. And they had the 
probably had a Super Bowl party there. And, right. You know, all that stuff that they're supposed yeah. to do, right? Yeah, it reminds me of a couple of bar mitzvahs that I went to recently. You're right. All right. That's right. More bar, yeah. not, not much so mitzvah. much mitzvah. Right. 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 So the loyalists, the traditionalists, the Jewish types, they had to clear out. After a while, they left the big cities because it got so Greek that they couldn't even handle it anymore. Right. And they went up to the little towns, but the Greeks came after them. The Jews came after them because for some reason, those Jews just couldn't stand the fact that any of the traditionalists were keeping up the old way. Wow. Really, really bothered them. Yeah, this got is... so upset with them. Right. And they tried to get them to do the new way. And they pushed them and pushed them until one family, the Maccabees, said, forget it. We can't, we're not going to take this anymore. And they stood up and they said, absolutely not. Now, you have to remember that the Jewish Hellenist Greeks were aligned, of course, with the government right. and the police right. and all the government forces who were Greek and wanted to see the whole world go Greek. And they started slandering the religious Jews. Right. So they got the army, because the Jewish Hellenists and the army are now going out after the traditionalist Jews. And they're trying to run them out of town. And that's where the dreidel came in. Ah, didn't know. Yeah, don't oh, don't know that part of the story. See, you gotta know. What are, you, what are we doing with the dreidel? I just thought it was a good game. Yeah. So we gotta read. There's a reason for this dreidel. What they did was the Jews had to go underground. The Torah schools had to go underground. Right. Because the Greeks were after them, and the Greeks. Why the Greeks get after wiping out the Torah? In every other country, the Greeks just let it go because they knew that everyone else is going to embrace Greek thought. Right. And after a while, they'll forget right. about their religion. But not so the Jews. The Jews kept on with the Jewish religion. So the Greek Hellenist Jews said, went to the government and they slandered the Torah. And they said, you've got to wipe out the Torah because if you don't wipe out the Torah, these people are going to keep up with it. And that's backward and it's going to prevent them from becoming right. Hellenistic. So the Jews that wanted to study Torah had to go underground. So what did they do? They gathered kids together, and they said, we're going to study Torah. But if anyone comes along, pull out your dreidels and tell them we're just doing a gambling game. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Okay. <clears throat> so every kid kept a dreidel in his pocket. And if, you know, there's like, you know, pounding right. on the door, come on, let us in. So they open the door, and the kids oh, are no, just, just playing dreidel playing here. Playing dreidel, yeah, see ya. Gimel, see you too and raise you too. Oh, you know? I gotcha, okay. And I didn't know that. That's why the dreidels became a popular game because that's how the loyalist Jewish kids escaped and tried to get wow. under the radar of the Greek forces. But ultimately it broke out into a full-fledged battle. So my question was today. Yes. You know, you ask any Jewish kid the story. And every Jewish kid knows that. Who are the heroes of the story? Right. The good guys in the Maccabees. The Maccabees. And therefore, every Jewish kid thinks they're Maccabees. And I'm sure that probably this evening, you know, and a happy Hanukkah to all our friends from Channel 4. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah, you got that. Channel yeah. 4, Channel 5, Channel right. 2. Right. And I'm sure that there's going to be a Hanukkah menorah lighting at the White House. Oh, there absolutely will be one. Right. Antiochus Hussein, I mean, yeah. Barack Hussein Obama if, will if, be lighting it. It didn't happen right. last night. It's right. going to happen sometime right. this week. Yes, yes. And at that dinner, I'm sure that the president's going to get up and he's going to laud the Jews for sticking to their guns yes. or their no, He won't bring up the guns. Arrows, he doesn't like, yeah, he doesn't right. like that anyway. And sticking up for freedom and for the right to Fight for what you believe in. As long as you do it within the 1967 borders. Right. Absolutely. He will bring that up. Now, Sorry. I would Sorry. wonder, <laughs> I would wonder if we would go around today and ask a Jew, are you a Hellenist or a Maccabee? Every Jew is going to say, I'm a Maccabee. Who's going to yeah. say I'm a Hellenist? No, it's not going to happen. <clears throat> so let's see. Let's see. What defines a Maccabee versus a Hellenist? A Hellenist basically integrates and imbibes in the Jewish, in the contemporary culture. Right, right. The Maccabee says, I'm not going with the contemporary culture, I'm going with Jewish culture. Okay, most Jews in the world today, let's see, how are we doing? I think this is going to be a tough mm, one. This one might be a tough one. Okay, the, um, the Hellenist 
will change their mode of dress to look like everyone else. The Maccabee right. still stays uh -oh. <laughs> a contemporary <laughs> culture. Uh, hmm. I don't have mine on. Mine aren't showing today. Mm -hmm. I don't have that on today. Let's see, where is Ouch. it? It's, it's near Yamaha. Yes. Okay. The Maccabee has a Jewish name. The, like, Yehuda or Matis Yahu. Or Jeff. Right. Oh, right. No. right. The um, Hellenist has a name like uh, Aristobulus. Right. Or Ken. Yeah, true. True. Right? True. <clears throat> the Maccabee knows the Torah. The Hellenist knows Greek culture. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much. Where are Jews today? Who's who? Who's who? So, you know, we talk about the Maccabees, and the Maccabees were valiant, and the Maccabees carried on. Who would be, if you're going to identify today and look around the world, who would be the Jews and who would be the Maccabees, and who would be the Hellenists? I think this one would be kind of easy. I mean, I definitely know who the Hellenists are. The Maccabees, obviously, are the, the, maybe the Orthodox Jews, the Jews that are still studying Torah, the st Jews that still believe mm -hmm. that. Right. Now we're going to have a, we're going to have a party at the White House, right? And the president's going to laud the Maccabees. So which Jews is the president standing up for? Well, yeah, he's standing next to Rahm Emanuel, so <laughs> right. no, so maybe not. Right. So who are the Jews that he, you know, who are the Jews that we really laud? And it is so interesting. Good point. So I said throughout the ages, this comes up over and over and over again, we can go back to the Soviet Union. Okay? Yep. It's the rise of communism. Where did the Jews break down on that one? Oh, we were right in front of it. Most of the Jews... Yeah, big time Jews, Mr. Trotsky. Trotsky's right there, and you see what ended up happening to all of them. But Trotsky was in the forefront, and the Jews even made the the Russians actually made the Yevsexia, which was the section of Jews who took upon themselves the job of wiping out all the Jewish traditions, so the Jews can get in line with communism. Okay. Go back to every other. Yeah, it is familiar in history there, yes. Over and over and over again. You always have this section of Jews who run and embrace the contemporary culture. And yep. then you got this small group of these fundamentalist traditional types who right. stick to their guns and they say, we're sticking to tradition no matter what. And if you look at the story, who is always the hero? The Maccabees, the, the traditionalists. Yeah. It always turns out to be that small little group that says... It's nice what's going on, but this culture is not the end all. There was one before this, and there was one before that, there was one before that, and there was even one before that. But there's Jewish culture. It had outlasted the Catholics in Spain, it yep. outlasted the Greeks in Israel, right. it outlasted the communists in Russia, and most likely is going to outlast the Western secularists in the United States. And when the culture, whichever it is, comes and goes, and there's a whole new culture, then there's going to be this new set of Jews that this new culture is going to They're say, going to love it. got to get out of here. You guys are old-fashioned. And the, the, cult, the small group of Maccabees is going to say, nah, been there, done that, seen them all. We're not buying into it. We're staying traditional. So bottom line, then, the... Uh, <clears throat> secular Jewish movement in this country when we celebrate Hanukkah, when they're out there you know, celebrating Hanukkah, lighting the Torah, playing with the dreidel, really isn't celebrating themselves there, are they? Actually, if they go to some of their rabbis, their rabbis will tell them that miracle with the jug of oil lasting for right. eight days didn't happen. Didn't really happen. And you know what? There always come times when Jews say to other Jews, that miracle didn't happen. But it's an interesting tradition that's not passed on. Because in every generation, there keep on coming up Jews who say, it did happen. Right. And then there's these new Jews that say, it didn't happen. But the ones that say, it did happen, everyone knows those are the real Jews. Those are the ones that keep on doing it. Those are the ones that keep the traditions alive. And those are the ones that other people try to wipe out. Other people join in with them. And what happens to them? They disappear. Other people join in with the prevalent culture. 
they disappear. Small group of Maccabees, every generation, we're all about small, hardy, contrarian, stick to their guns and hang on to their religion. So what, what's the deal with Jews then? I mean, why are we made to always be in the forefront, always to try the new thing, always to go out there, the new movement, the new thing, we, we run it from Hollywood to the business to whatever. What's the deal with Jews? See, it's really, really interesting. Here we got the Jews are always in the forefront of assimilation. Yep. And yet, the Jews ultimately never assimilate. That's, uh, that's a tough one there. It's a very strange How thing. It's a very strange thing. It's so interesting that the pride of the Jews is that they keep their head above it. Even right. well, many, many, many rush to it. Right, because most of our holidays, if you look back on it, that's where they go. So you know, most of our holidays, I guess, don't celebrate most of our Jews. Yeah, uh, the, and that's true. The Jews are a minority. It's a small group, and it is that small group, by the way, though, that everyone's proud of. Everyone's right. really proud of the Jew who is walking down the street looking like a Jew. But what if you have a Jew that's walking down the street and he's indistinguishable from anyone else? He observes like anyone else. He embraces life like everyone else. He keeps the credo and the values of everyone else. And he's very proud of himself. Except when that other Jew comes along and everyone knows, you know, it's you all, you guys that keep up to your traditions, you're going to be the ones that are around. But if that's the case, then how come, my, my guess is, at least in my experience in the past, let's say you're walking through the grocery store. You've got your hat on, you, you're dressed like this. It's usually the secular Jews that are probably more embarrassed and turn away from you. Oh, I'm not like him than anyone else. I don't know how right. proud they are. It's like, oh, wait a minute, that's not a Jew. I mean, I don't, I'm too embarrassed about that. Right. But you know something? There's an interesting thing that occurred many years ago in the 1800s. Right. in Germany. That was the rise of the reform movement. Yep. The early reform protagonists looked at the Orthodox and they said, these are not our people. These people right. are barbaric. They mutilate children, little boys when they're eight days old. Yep. They have crazy dietary laws. They don't really want to be here in Germany. They keep talking about going back to Israel. These are not our people. I can't identify with them. They are not Judaism. Somehow or another, like what happened was they mutated right. and they got stuck in the past. Who wants to be identified with a group of people that are living 2,000 years ago? And, and they really they didn't want it. And then when they took power and they, they tried to refashion, reform Judaism in their way, they didn't identify with the Orthodox at all. And then along came a man named Rabbi Hirsch and he says, you know what? I don't identify with you. You're not Jewish. We want to be separate. We don't think that Reformed Jews are Jews. We're our own people. Right. All of a sudden, the Reformed what do you mean? You can't say we're not Jews. Yeah. And you can't separate from us. You can't leave the community. Right. He wanted to secede right. and make his own community. And then, no. And then they all of a sudden, they went out and they hired an Orthodox rabbi to be, <laughs> to, that would be accepting of all the Reformed Jews. So the minute that they were saying, you're not Jews, we don't identify. That's not my Judaism. You know, it's so interesting. You walk up to this guy. I'm walking down the airport. You know, I don't eat kosher or anything. That's not the Judaism I believe in. They're all looking at you. If I would turn around and say, oh, yeah, well, that's not the Judaism I believe in. What do you mean? How can you say that? What do you mean? Right. As soon as I want to secede from them, they're outraged. I now, they might say, that. I can't stand this. This is backwards. This is not me. I don't identify with that. But tell their friends, that's not me. I'm not like that. But as soon as the Jews want to pull away from them, because they know that it is really what they are. So deep down, they know what they are. Yep. That's interesting. That's my field. And, and if you're they don't, right. you know, they run, then they really aren't, to tell you the truth. All right. That makes sense. Well, then the question is, and I guess we can look at the history what happens to Hellenists? After the Maccabee War, what happened to the Hellenists then? So I guess that's what's going to happen now. What, did they turn back to Jews afterwards, or did they just convert and move on? Well, first of all, they ended up fighting in this, in the Hanukkah story, they fought a war. Right, well, so they fight a they war, they were killing over. each other. Right. They're, these are Jews, you know, they were, they were on the side of the Greeks, and Jews, of course, they were against the Greeks. And although they were fighting with the Greeks, it's got to be they were fighting with some of those Absolutely. Jews, too. Well, what happens to them? Right. Well, where are they now? That's, that's, that's a good question. Where are they now? Sometimes I ask this question, I say, how many people here 
had grandparents who were Reformed Jews. Sometimes I'll speak to a Jewish audience. Sometimes you find grandparents. Sometimes, even That's very few, great grandparents. I had there. recently a group of about 30 people at a class. So I said, how many people here had grandparents who were Reform? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, too many. Two people raised their hand. Two people. And of the two people, one of them was currently Orthodox. Right, okay, which is good. So there right. was one guy who was a Reformed Jew today who had grandparents who were Reformed. By and large, it just doesn't carry on. By right. and large, it doesn't carry on. You know, we'll see. Maybe it will carry on. Can't imagine it. it. From my perspective, I can't see how it could happen. But maybe they will. Maybe there'll be a renewal. The problem is, as I said to a conservative Jew one time, it looked in the 1950s and 60s as though the Orthodox were out for the count. Right. Now, miraculously, all of a sudden the Orthodox flourished. Right. Because they hung on to it. And you know, the Orthodox, if you would ask them, even the 50s and 60s, say, how can you guys survive? Don't worry, God will do a miracle and we will survive. Right. Because they believe in miracles. So now it looks like it's flip-flop. And the secular Jews look like they're disappearing. So I say, you know, you can't make it. Why? Because the only thing that will save you now is a miracle. And you don't believe in miracles. don't believe in miracles. It's not going to happen. <laughs> not gonna, no, the Orthodox Jews, the only thing that could save them was a miracle. Except they believed in miracles. So a miracle happened. You know, do you believe in miracles? Right. I guess that's how it works. I guess that's how it's right. So, we're, so the essence of this story here is the, sto the story of Hanukkah that we all as Jews celebrate, we're kind of still fighting right now. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know... Unfortunately, most of the people that are celebrating Hanukkah are fighting on the wrong side of it. They're on the wrong side. Whoops. They're actually, right. So they actually, most of the people that, that celebrate Hanukkah, or maybe have like the, I just saw a new one, you know, the, the, the Christmas Hanukkah bush. Right. It's right, Hanukkah, right, but at the top, it's got a Jewish star. Right. Okay. Right? And it says, like in the ad, it says, ideal for intermarried couples. Now, the, and maybe it is ideal for intermarried couples. What makes a Maccabee is Maccabees believe that no matter how down and out it looks, a small group of people that hang tough ultimately are going to turn the whole world around and it's going to go their way. And that's what the Maccabees did. And that's really where any Jew who's a believing Orthodox Jew will really hang tough and say, I don't care what the odds are, it's all going to come my way because God said God can do miracles. Wow. Okay. So there's a lot of Jews that need to do some rethinking here. Right. Oh. Probably they're not watching those. And Hanukkah <laughs> is an opportunity to get yourself attached to the idea of the Maccabees, that there are core values of what it is to be a Jew. One of them is that God can do miracles. And the truth is, the existence of the Jews today continues to be a miracle. Otherwise, by all rights, we should be gone. But That's we are true. miraculous, and we'll continue on that way. And if you want Jews who are going to be able to walk through the airport and everyone's going to point out that's a Jew, then you have to start thinking about which side am I on. Otherwise, right. maybe you're going to have children or grandchildren who are going to walk through the airport and they're going to be like everyone else. Like everybody else, which might be the goal of some people. Yeah, there. maybe. Right. It's kind of sad to have come this far and end up being like And end up like everybody else. else. Wow. Wow, that's a shame. Interesting. Okay. I, 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 this is good. So this might be the real reality show. This is a reality show in itself. This is what reality is. That's right. I like this. All right. Good Judaism stuff. is a reality show. I like that. No All doubt. right. Good. All right. Great. Well, exciting episode. Yeah. And it actually taught me a lot. Learned a lot here. Next week, we're going to be back with another amazing episode. Might even talk about Hanukkah again. I don't know. That's up maybe, to you. We'll have to see. Maybe, maybe not. But we'll talk again next week. Jeff and the Rabbi.